Welcome back to the Xavier News faculty feature. Today, my name is Paul Gates, and I'm here with Mr. Metzger. Hello, everyone. Um, we're really excited to be here. Mr. Metzger has an extensive coin collection, and I'm in AP Lit right now, so every day I kind of get to look at this box, but I'm not sure quite what's in it, so we're going to kind of get into that. So, how did you get into coins? Uh, my son, when he was like four or five, was given uh, an old U.S. silver dollar from uh, one of his grandpas uh, that, that his grandpa had, and he took an interest in that. Uh, and so I wanted to kind of foster that interest in him, and I had never collected coins or anything like that. Uh, so I started helping my son put together a coin collection, uh, and in working with him and doing that, it kind of blossomed into what's become uh, a small business for, uh, for myself, uh, where I now buy and sell uh, coins. Uh, like I have a, a website, so I'm a, I guess I'm an online coin dealer. Uh, and in doing that, I never really wanted to put together a collection for myself, but I had this idea that what if I tried to get a coin uh, that would be associated with each work of literature that I teach, and I can have that collection in my classroom, pass the coins around so that the guys can have something in their hand from uh, the era or the time period of the novels that we're reading and make that connection. So that's what we have here. So this is the extent of my actual coin collection. My son has a ridiculous coin collection, ridiculous for an 11 year old, uh, but that's all the virtue of the fact that in my buying and selling of coins, I kind of spin things off to him and maybe he'll be able to retire. Wow, that's so, awesome. So it's, it's kind of a later passion. That's really yeah. cool. I was totally expecting to come in here and here. It's, uh, you know, something I've always done. No, so no, really just, cool. yeah, just something within the past, you know, five or six years. And it's, uh, it's been something that I've, I've really enjoyed. Awesome. All right. I want to get into some of the individuals here. All right. So maybe not all of them, but can we start with some of the oldest ones and then move to some of your favorites? Okay, cool. So uh, in terms of the oldest ones, uh, they would be the ancient Greek coins that are here. Uh, and these are two ancient Greek tetradrachms, uh, and that would have been the largest denomination of coin uh, in the 3rd, 4th century BC. So I have this for when I teach the Odyssey. It lands about 300 years after the Odyssey. Uh, when the Odyssey was actually taking place, uh, there wouldn't have been uh, coins, or it would have been very, very early. So those coins would cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, but these uh, ancient Greek tetradrachms uh, are, are pretty cool, pretty heavy silver coins. Uh, I was just talking to my class the other day about them. One tetradrachm would be about the equivalent of a week's pay for a soldier. Uh, so in today's value, uh, you know, maybe like a thousand dollars of, uh, of, you know, purchasing power. Uh, these aren't worth a thousand dollars. They're worth, you know, a couple hundred bucks a piece. Uh, but they're, they're pretty cool uh, old coins. Really detailed design on those, too. Yeah, and they, they've held up pretty well. I mean, conditions everything with these things. Uh, if they were in much better condition, the value would go up considerably. Uh, but I picked these because they had uh, real nice, lasting uh, images on them. One is of, uh, of one of the Ptolemaic kings, and the other has uh, Hercules with the Nemean lion's head uh, on them. So you can see those real well. So those are the oldest ones wow. that I have. Those, I mean, before Christ. That's, that's so old. So let's move into some of your favorites. All right. And then I have a couple questions. Too. Okay. Uh, so uh, I think my favorites are these old British ones. Uh, I have a King Edward Groat, which is a four pence. Uh, Queen Elizabeth I Groat, again, four pence. And then a King James Shilling. Uh, the Queen Elizabeth and King James, uh, that's right at the time of Shakespeare. Uh, so Shakespeare was working under both Queen Elizabeth and King James. They're just really cool coins. They have the, uh, the busts of uh, these monarchs on them. Uh, they've got the big goofy collars. Uh, and I just think that they, they hold up really well. Uh, and they're, they're big enough that you can, you can see what's going on on them. Uh, and yeah, those are, those are probably my, my favorite ones. Those are really neat. And then, can we talk about the Confederate dollar for a second? Yeah, so this is, it, yeah, Confederate currency is interesting, uh, and I, I was just doing some, some research yesterday about Confederate currency because I came upon uh, a, a North Carolina $1 bill that on the back of it, it had 
$20 bills that were running the opposite way. And so I was doing some research and talking to some, uh, some other coin geeks. Uh, and uh, during the, uh, the Confederacy, you know, the Confederate States uh, secede from the Union and they need to come up with a monetary system so that they can, you know, operate. However, they, they didn't really have two of the important things. One, any actual like monetary backing. So we, like the United States was on the gold standard at the time, so all the currency was backed by gold or silver. Mm -hmm. So you would have gold notes or silver notes that would be good for exchange of $1 worth of silver or $50 worth of gold. Well, the Confederate States didn't have any money, uh, and so their notes were more like promises of return. So like we promise you that in 1866, you can turn this in for money. That didn't go so well for them. Uh, and the reason why uh, I have that North Carolina note that has 20s on the back of it is because in addition to not having any actual monetary backing for their system, they didn't have any like machines, they didn't have any supplies, so they're using real cheap, lousy paper. They're like reusing anything that they can find. They're hand cutting their bills. So you'll find all the Confederate notes, like on this one, uh, you can see that like it's not evenly cut on the edge. They're all hand signed, which is really interesting. This one's in really good shape. They don't have a lot of value uh, because they produced so much of it because it it lost value like crazy, sure. so it wasn't like, you know, post-World War I German hyperinflation, but it was close, where it was like, you would, something that would have normally cost you, you know, a dollar was like $600, because wow. they just kept printing and printing and sure. printing, because they were losing the war, and they weren't able to produce agriculturally and ship to the north and do all of the things that would have backed their financial system. So that's what, that's what that guy is, is doing. And it's... It's one, of the, it's one of these weird things about being a coin collector is like having uh, these elements from, you know, embarrassing, uh, shameful times. Like, so like having a Confederate note is like kind of a, a weird thing to have around, uh, but as like a, an interesting part of history, uh, it's, I think it's, it's worthwhile, and especially if you're teaching American literature uh, and, you know, you can have it as this kind of relic of the past. Uh, there's, it's also like Third Reich coins from, you know, the 30s through the, through the 40s. You know, some people are really enthusiastic about collecting those because they have all this like Nazi, you know, uh, iconography on it and they're, you know, doing that for all the wrong reasons. So it's, it is kind of a weird thing to have these uh, relics of, of evil and, and, you know, immorality. Yeah, well, I mean, this is an amazing collection. What room is this? This is uh, 217. What if I told everybody in the audience to drop by 217 if they want to get a closer look for themselves? Yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Always, uh, always happy to, to show things off. We got, we've got other crazy things in here. We've got this guy. This is a Katanga cross. This is from, uh, from Africa uh, in, uh, in kind of the, the 17, 1800s. This was an actual piece of, uh, of currency. That one got passed around class. Yeah, we did that. We have... Uh, we have these Manila, which were used during the slave trade uh, in Africa. This one was uh, unearthed from a, a slave ship that uh, wrecked off the coast of England. So all sorts of uh, really interesting stuff here. Yeah, this is awesome. Mr. Metzger, I can't thank you enough for your willingness to do this. My pleasure. I think everybody's going to really like it. So thank you again. Cool. Thanks.